Uh, Chris Fernari here for Brewbound.com, and we are at the 2013 Craft Brewers Conference in Washington, D.C., and co-founder of New Belgium, Kim Jordan, is kind enough to join us on camera. Thank you. Good afternoon, Chris. How are you? I'm doing great, thanks. Good. Um, so we just uh, finished up and wrapped up uh, your, your keynote address downstairs a couple hours ago, um, keeping with the theme of, of having a story. Uh, at some point, uh, for some brewers, the story uh, maybe doesn't end, but maybe one chapter of the story closes, um, and some brewers are going to be looking for perhaps a way uh, out of their brewery, and, and for you, that was turning it back over to the employees, going 100% employee-owned. Um, maybe talk about the different types of succession plans that are out there and available to craft brewers. Um, I think there are some brewers that are getting to that point that they're thinking sure. about it. And why'd, yeah. you, why'd you go 100% employee-owned? For us, it was a natural next step. We've been um, open book management since 1995, so all of our coworkers know, you know where the money goes. They know what the strategy is. We expect them to participate in the business of running the business. They've um, had an equity stake in the company since 1996. And so for us, when we were looking at, for New Belgium, we like that business role model idea. We like using business as a way to think about how do you change the world. So for us, this was a great legacy play. And by that, I don't mean mine specifically. I mean New Belgium's, a turn of the ownership wheel that still ensures those deeply held values. Other companies may not find that so compelling, and that's okay too. Um, I think, you know, it's been great to see Brian Grossman grow up into Sierra Nevada with such grace. I've known Brian since he was a kid. Sure. And it's really been fun to watch him. Um, he seems to be doing a really good job these days, and I feel sort of like a, a proud <laughs> aunt or something, you know, <laughs> watching that happen. Yeah. I'll, you know, there are then the more obvious um, private equity. Yeah. We found with private equity, the difficult thing is it's only one step. Hmm. And it's, you know, a three to five year step. Right. And then something has to happen again right. because the private equity people want their money. Right. So that's kind of a like, well, then what's next? And I think it's important that people are talking about what's next before they take that step. Sure. Because you don't want to take it and then be like, oh, you mean you're going to sell the company in three years? That wasn't my intent. Right. Right. Um, another one is family offices, which tend to be a form of private equity that's more patient. Mm -hmm. They have a longer time horizon. I think that helps people, you know, to, to sort of take the time they may need to figure out, can we repurchase the company? But even if you do that, you're still asking what's next because inevitably, right. you know, unless someone's got some, you know, some private stash of something that the rest <laughs> of us are unaware of, you right. know, eventually we all go, right? Sure. So um, one of the things that my board of directors was really good at was saying to me, you need to figure this out before you have to figure it out. Right. Because when you do any of those things, get a bank loan, get a job, when you're under pressure, you don't have the space and the grace and the you know mind calm to do that in a good way. Right, so you, you mentioned private equity. Um, is, is that a positive or a negative uh, for them to be in the space, and, and I'm not thinking just in terms of a, a succession plan, but I mean, you saw just last week, uh, you know, Brew Hub is a new concept that launched right. with a hundred million dollars of private equity money. What does that do to the space, and you know, is it good for Kraft to have this sort of uh, massive influx of, of capital coming in all at once? Um, I think that some percentage is, uh, you know, there need to be some strategies for people to figure out how to get, you know, founder liquidity out of their companies. I think a small amount of that is okay. I think when, the, um, when in your, um, I was trying to use DNA as the concept, but that's not gonna work. When you're moving into your next generation, right. If you have too much of people who have really no passion, no sort of, 
I came to this as a home brewer. I came to this because I really love beer, but it's more of a money play. Sure. I think that's a problem. Hmm. So I, I think certainly it's going to be a strategy people will use. I think they're going to be great private equity groups. And I think it's important that they're, you know, that this sort of core of artisans who do this out of a place of passion is um, is still strongly kind of driving the ship. Still intact. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Well, uh, you know, we're, we're paying attention to this space pretty closely, um, and I, I don't know if anybody could say they saw uh, New Belgium going 100% employee owned this year. Um, so that was a nice sneak attack, if Good, you will, thanks. on thanks. the industry. And, uh, you know, we're just excited to watch how everything pans out. Yeah, we are too. Well, thank you for your thoughts. Yeah. Cheers. See you. Bye. Mm -hmm.